I've been saying for a little while now that it does not appear as though the Pixel 10 series of devices is going to sell based on the hardware improvements, or at least to large degree uh, on those hardware improvements. It looks like they're going to be very, very similar to the Pixel 9. That's not necessarily a bad thing. The Pixel 9 was a very good looking device and the camera hardware was already pretty darn solid. But because of that, Obviously, that means that Google is going to try to sell you the Pixel 10 based on some really cool new software features. And we are finally beginning to kind of get a little bit of a clearer picture of exactly what those software features are going to be. Today, there was a leak in a Telegram channel called Mystic Leaks. And in this leak was this very, very interesting screen recording where they got this from, how they got it. I have no idea, but guys, this is showing a feature called Magic Q. Now, this is actually a brand new name, apparently, for a feature that we've talked about already on the channel a couple of times. We thought it was going to be called Pixel Sense, but I guess Google decided that Magic Q was a better name. Personally, I think Pixel Sense was probably better, but Magic Q is what it is now. What does Magic Q do, you may ask? Well, as it says right here, Magic Q uses AI to show you useful details and time-saving actions based on the app that you're in. It gives an example. For example, if a friend asks for your flight number in a chat, Magic Q can find it from your Gmail, saving you the search. And presumably, it does this without you asking it to. It just sees in the string of text messages that your friend said, hey, what was that flight number of yours? It looks at that and sees that might be something I can help with. And it checks your Gmail and says, oh yeah, they did have a flight number. Here it is. Maybe it pops up in a notification. It's not exactly clear how this looks. Like how does it actually present this information to you? It's not clear if you can manually trigger this to occur. How do you actually invoke this magic cue to do what it's going to do? Is it all just automatic? We don't really know. It reminds me a little bit of that demo that Apple did for Apple Intelligence, their like improved version of Siri, where they asked Siri, hey, what was my mom's flight time or their flight information? And Siri was supposed to be able to go through their phone, much the same way using some sort of local on-device only AI, find that information and then present it to them. The big difference here, if I am understanding this correctly, and it's possible that I'm not, is that this is happening in a proactive or automatic way. It's just sort of doing this on its own. It's seeing that opportunity on your screen and then just doing the thing. Is there a way to manually trigger this thing and to have it do what it's going to do manually? There almost certainly has to be, but it seems to me the magic part of this is that it's saving you the time. Again, maybe I'm totally wrong about this, but just the way that they've worded this, someone asks you for your flight number, Magic Q can find it from your Gmail, saving you the search. So if you have to tell it to do the search, isn't that kind of doing a search? It seems to me like that's the difference. This might be proactive and automatic. Now, as we let this animation play forward, we get a little bit more information to talk about right here. We have sort of the how it works section. Magic Q uses AI to offer you personalized suggestions based on app usage data it collects, your recent screen activity, and certain Google app data. It also uses foundational data, such as the email and phone number from your Google account. You choose the apps Magic Q can use data from in Magic Q settings. These could include Gmail, Calendar, Keep and Tasks data from your primary Google account, and Contacts, Messages, and Screenshots on your device. And then it says, your Magic Q app data and recent screen activity are protected in a secure, isolated environment unless you choose to share it, that data is kept private. And that's a really important thing down there at the bottom, that this is supposed to be local on your device, it's protected in this isolated environment, it's been processed, I would guess, by Gemini Nano, something running directly on the device. But this also has to be something that you can just outright disable, because no matter how many times Google says, 
It's local only, it's on device only, it never goes to a cloud, it never leaves your phone. There's going to be people that I think reasonably are just not going to trust this. They're going to call it Google spyware or whatever it might be, and they're going to want nothing to do with this feature that's going to be looking at your phone's screen as well as all of these different applications and mining information from it to present to you, presumably, I think still, though, you have to be able to turn this thing off, and I would assume you're, you're going to be able to turn it off. Another question I have, assuming that this is something that is proactive, are we going to get to a place where it can prompt you with data and information that isn't just based on, like, what's on your screen? What can actually cue Magic Q to do what it does? I think it would be very cool if we could resurrect some of the features from Google now. Maybe it can learn your patterns, what you do, your routines, and it knows that at this time you go to this place every day and, hey, traffic's bad or there's some bad weather coming that's going to be impacting you on that brief trip and it could pop up and tell you things like that. Or is it only going to be restricted to things that it can basically see on the screen of your Pixel device. That would be a little bit disappointing for me if it's only stuff directly on the screen. I wanted to reach out into the real world in a more sort of concrete way like I'm describing, but that kind of all remains to be seen. But at the end of the day, I think that this does make a lot of sense because what's better than an assistant that does exactly what you ask it to do when you ask it? Well, that would be an assistant that does what you need it to do before you've even asked it. And I think that that might be what we are describing here with Magic Cues. But guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments down below. Does this sound like something that you would like to use? Based on what we know about it, do you think I am crazy? Is this something that's proactive and automatic? Or is this something that you imagine needing to trigger at that point, then what? You've got Gemini that does a lot of these sorts of things, and then Magic Hues that is another thing you have to manually trigger that kind of overlaps a bit with Gemini in some ways. It's basically Gemini that can dig into your Gmail account. That kind of reminds me of this report from 9 to 5 Google that talks about how the original Pixie concept was basically like an amped up version of Gemini. And because it overlapped too much with Gemini, it got split into two different things. One of these things became the Pixel Screenshots app that we all now know and uh, I never ever use. And the other went towards what is now being called magic cues. So in my mind, that kind of indicates it can't overlap with Gemini. It has to be its own thing. So I think that's kind of worth mentioning as well. Regardless, let me know what you think in those comments down below. Subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.